The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by HDA Modelworks, suppliers of scale lighting products, detail accessory parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelworks.com today. Hello again everybody, Boyd back with you again. Well, we're here with the finale today of our 124 scale California Kid three window coupe build. This is a 34 Ford from the movie, uh, the little hot rod roadster that Martin Sheen drove in the film. One of my favorite movie cars. Uh, and you guys have been following this video for the last uh, few updates. I've been talking about what I've been doing to uh, put all this together. I've had to use a couple of different model kits. So I'm going to talk about what I used a little bit here today and explain everything best as I can if you ever want to try to do one of these yourself out there. Um, the basic kit that I started with is the uh, ZZ Top Eliminator Kit by Revell, originally put out by Monogram in 124 scale. Um, that's the basic body, uh, the chassis, the running gear, the rear end, the front suspension, the engine, uh, most of the other stuff, uh, the basic stuff on the kit I use, the interior. So that's all from the ZZ Top kit. I bought a second kit, which was the Revell 124 scale 29 Ford Roadster, or Hot Rod. Uh, I used that because it included these really nice um, steel wheels here with the uh, factory Ford baby moon hubcaps and trim rings, which were on the movie car. Uh, didn't come with this kit, and they're actually pretty hard to find, especially in the right scale. It really worked out great because the tires that came with those two were perfect for this car. They had real... You know, the movie car had real tall tires in the back and really small ones up front. And uh, <clears throat> that helps to give it that kind of nice rake that it has. You know, it's dropped a little bit in the front end. So that worked out really well. Um, some of the other parts from the uh, Revell 29 Ford are the door handles here, which this kit didn't come with any kind of door handles. The mirrors from this kit. Uh, the taillights are from this kit. Uh, which I moved those from originally being located here on the fenders to where they are on the movie car. The rear bumper that you see here is scratch built. That's uh, just some you know styrene that I cut. I made the brackets and just made this basic bumper. In the movie, it had just this real plain black piece of like almost angle iron bumper bumper you know welded onto the back, which turned out to be perfect against the uh, sheriff's car who was using the uh, front push bar to push people off of cliffs with. So that worked out really well, just by coincidence. Um, up here at front, I used uh, some copper wire, and I bent this. This had the, the car had this little tiny little kind of Nerf bumper on here, which was basically completely useless in a crash. It's just a small piece of tubing, um, but uh, it looked cool in the front of the car. And we were, of course, you know, that's kind of a one of, one of a kind thing. I knew there wasn't going to be a kid out there that had that, so I scratch made that. Uh, just took some wire, bent it glued these two little uh, end pieces on it, kind of scalloped them, you know, made them a little wave action on the ends like they are on the bumper. And then I had uh, this little, they had the little license plate mounted here on the passenger side. So I did that. Now, curiously, the Fred De uh, Katie decal set that I talked about that I used on this for the flames and everything had a lot of really accurate decals uh, for the car. Uh, a couple that were really uh, kind of, wish I would have got with it, though, were uh, first of all, the, uh, kind of strange they didn't uh, print the uh, correct license plate. You know, the, it's a California black plate, but it's not the same one as it was in the movie, so that's okay. But the one things that I'm missing here are it had the car had these really fine little kind of triangle-shaped pinstripes that went ahead just you know just ahead of the flames here, one on each side on the hood, and I think it had either had one or two on the sides of the uh, you know the engine cowlings here, these panels just ahead of the flames. I tried a couple times with a super tiny paintbrush and some really thinned out white paint to try to paint those on and I, you know, they're they're basically like triangle shapes or something and um, I just couldn't get it to look right. I'd get one of them to look pretty good and then when I tried to do the next one it didn't look the same and, you know, you get a little thicker or a little thinner and I just wasn't happy and I thought rather than having them on there looking bad, I just won't have them on there at all. Maybe later on I'll come across some custom decal set, you know, or... Uh, extra decal set in another model that has something close to that and I'll be able to go back and put those on there that'd be cool because uh, they were kind of a common like script looking thing that they did back in the day 
Um, but anyway, that being said, everything else, as far as the detail on the car, I think I've got pretty close. I thought it was pretty cool that they gave you the little uh, Southern California Drag Racing Club uh, decal that he had in the windshield here. That was on the actual decal set, so that was cool. Um, the gauges are, decals are in there. Had the California Kid lettering there. Had the correct flames and everything. So all that worked out really good. Uh, here we got the side pipes. These are, uh, somebody asked about these again. These are, this part of the side pipe is off of the 66 uh, Chevy Malibu Street Rat Kit by Monogram in 124 scale. You know, the one that kind of sits up really high in the front end. I built a different version of that kit a while back and had those left over. So they worked out good. The front half here is just a piece of, uh, I, I picked out a piece of sprue that was basically the same diameter. And then heated it and bent it and tucked them up underneath like that. This has been painted with all clads. These are supposed to look not quite uh, chrome. In the movie they were toned down a little bit and then the center part was just blacked out. So we did that. Um, got the, um, let's see if I've missed anything so far. Got the little stripe painted on all the way around the side here. Now this uh, was a detail that I actually missed, right, you know, first off. I was kind of watching the movie and didn't notice it. Then I started noticing it more and more. And at first when I saw it, I thought it was a white painted on stripe that went around the, you know, the, there's a little raised body line right here along the, all of it kind of wraps around this thing. And I thought it was um, the, uh, you know, I thought it was painted white, but then there's a couple shots where, He's sitting in the sun just right, and you can see it was a little piece of chrome strip that went all the way around there, which is quite a bit of work because that never came on this original car. And uh, to get that molded, and, you know, it looks like it's back here, especially it's all one piece. So they did a lot of work to make that custom for this car. Uh, so I went over that with a Sharpie. Uh, like, you know, I do a lot of that. It, it worked out pretty good. But one thing that I want to talk about is that I used... Let me grab this really quick. Uh, when you... When you do work with Sharpies or even, you know, the, like the Tester's Silver and stuff like that, what happens is a lot of the time, um, the it, it, it takes a long time for it to dry. In fact, it might be months before it completely dries to where if you accidentally touch it or whatever, it, it leaves a dull smudge on it or, a, you know, it, it just screws around with it. So uh, I use this product here from Allclad. This is called their Aqua Gloss. Now what they advertise on this stuff is that it's uh, supposed to be able to be used over those metallic type paints uh, and you can put a sealer over them to where it'll, you know, no longer, it'll actually dry and it'll have a hard shell on top of it uh, and it won't take away the, you know, the metallic look that it has, which unfortunately almost every kind of clear coat that you use will do that to that type of a paint, whether it's all clad chrome or whatever you're working with. Well, this is designed specifically to, you know, for that application. so. I'm going to be using more of this. Um, I kind of recently discovered it. Um, when I get ready to build the big um, B36 bomber that I've got, that's going to have that really bright, you know, metallic finish on there. And uh, it's going to have to have decals and everything put on on the top. So I'm going to use this as a sealer over everything, and I really like it. Now, one of the important things they tell you about it is uh, not to shake it. So all this weird white stuff in the bottom is supposed to just kind of stay there. I don't know why it's there if, if, if they don't want it mixed in with everything else, but... Uh, that's that's the instruction. Now, I just took a tiny little brush, put this stuff in a cup, and I just lightly, you know, after the whole model was cleared and everything, I uh, just went over this real real careful, just, you know, just that little stripe right there, and I went over these and anything that I had painted that was that uh, metallic. And I'm telling you, it works really fantastic. It, it actually, if you see it just in the right light, it puts sort of a, a transparent little shell on the top of it that gives it a more realistic almost plated look you know you it's really hard to get the exact look is is real chrome plating but um or or polished stainless but uh it, it does it gives a really nice um almost you know it makes it look deeper and not like a just a magic marker you know line on there or whatever and it it, it works really good so i highly recommend it um you can spray this or brush it on it seems to really uh, self level really nice and everything if you do use a brush so that worked out really well you can also use uh you know, like if you're going to do your all clad and you're going to touch up, every once in a while you get chrome parts, you know, that, uh, and I actually do that in a few spots where when you, no matter how careful you are clipping them off the tree, it leaves a little bit of chrome missing and you can see it, you know. Uh, there was some of that going on around these trim rings and, you know, stuff like that. And so I was able to take a little bit of that all clad chrome and just touch it on there and then I, you know, use that same stuff and just dabbed over and it really does a nice job um, uh, hiding that, so... Uh, you got kind of the stripe that goes all the way around, like I said, kind of all the way around the back of the car here. 
and uh, got the taillights moved. They were originally on the ZZ Top kit. They were located here in the fenders. There were these little slots cut in here. I had to fill those and uh, you know move the taillights over to here. The car's missing the louvers that the uh, car had in the film in. There was supposed to be a set of louvers right here, and there were supposed to be another set that were on the side of the uh, engine covers there, but uh, they weren't on this kit, and I have no way of making them perfectly, you know, symmetrical and, and lined up and everything on, on that small of a scale, so I just decided not to worry about it. I'll go ahead and pop the hood off um, and show you the engine. The engine is the engine that came with the kit, uh, but what I did is I... Uh, I swapped out the intake manifold for the one out of the 29 Ford and used the three deuce set up here, three two-barrel carbs. Uh, the ZZ Top engine does not come with a distributor, so I picked, a, picked that up out of the 29 Ford, put my own spark plug wires on there. I added a master cylinder out of a old uh, 64 Dodge uh, kit that I had for parts. Um, the old cars used to have a single reservoir, so I thought that would look good in there. And that's about all I did. I put a radiator hose that I actually made out of real rubber. Uh, that's a piece of, uh, kind of hard to see it down in there, but it's a piece of uh, shrink wrap, shrink tubing um, with a little, I got the little plastic piece, used the elbow, and then the rest of it glued it so it went straight to the block. Uh, and that's, you know, that looks good because it's real rubber. Uh, this hood is really finicky. I'll try to uh, set this back on here as carefully as I can. It wants to sit kind of crooked, but if you set it on there just right, it'll it'll line up. Um, one more little detail I wanted to point out. Of course, I had to get a replacement grill. The grill came out of the... Uh, I ordered a second kit, which is the Revel uh, 33 Ford Street Rod, which is basically the same kit as the ZZ Top Eliminator. Um, the, the grill that came with this kit was just unusable for, for what I was going to do. I was going to do this wash on it here, and you could see all these little pits. This one has a few of them, but not nearly as bad. Uh, and it's it's passable. So I'll just save the other grill. I threw that in with the other kit. If I do a custom, you know, 34 Ford or 33 Ford later, I can maybe paint the grill. And, uh, you know, a lot of times you do cut, see custom jobs where they, you know, they paint all the chrome and everything. So if I paint over it, it'll look a whole lot better. So I'll just save that one for later. Um, not a lot to see on the bottom of the car. I can show it to you, I guess, really quick. Uh, the chassis is really, uh, you know, straightforward. You got a couple of, uh, you know, these these uh, traction bar deals here. You got the basic uh, straight axle front end with the, you know, shocks up front. Uh, you can see my headers aren't connected here. I have the open headers underneath. Painted the front um, uh, axle white like it was in the car in the movie, which which is uh, really cool. And in a lot of the shots, it looks chrome when the car is coming towards you and stuff. But there is that one scene where he's in the garage working, you know, he's down in the pit underneath of the car working on it, and they show you the front end, and you can see it's painted white. And you can see the white headers and some other detail on the bottom. You can see the uh, side pipes aren't hooked up. So pretty cool. So uh, I did the interior in tan. It's going to be hard to see that. Now this uh, interior just came with a straight uh, bench seat uh, all the way across, and... Um, the car in the movie actually had these uh, bucket seats that had sort of uh, surfboard shaped uh, high backs on them, kind of weird looking. I uh, looked through all my stuff, didn't have anything that was even close to that, so I just decided to leave the, uh, the bench seat in there, which again I think is kind of cool and nostalgic. It's like the original seat. Uh, I did up the dash a little bit with some wood trim and did the gauges and all that, but it's such a low roof and everything it's really hard to see in there. But originally I had it all in black, but I saw a couple shots of the movie where they, where, you know, they used tan. And I do like that because it, it actually lightens it up in a little bit. And when you look in there, you can actually see that there are seats and, you know, something is in there where it was black before. You really couldn't see anything. So I um, uh, did the taillights and everything. Like I said, moved those. Uh, trying to think of anything else. Um, oh, the little ornament here on the top of the hood. Uh, that's missing from the 33. This is actually a grill for a 33. It's different than a 34. The, the, the 34 had this little sort of chrome crown thing on the top. So that's a little uh, piece that I found in the 29 Ford, uh, which I think they're supposed to be little bumperettes or something that go on a bumper. And it was a perfect little teardrop shape. Uh, it might be just a tiny little bit too big, but it is close enough for me. And it was better than having nothing at all on there. So I stuck that on there. Uh, originally, I had a piece of uh, chrome sprue laying across the hood here for the, you know, it had the chrome hood hinge. 
Uh, that looked too big and too tall, so I took that off and I just used some uh, bare metal foil for that. Cut a thin strip of that and laid that on there. Got the rearview mirror in the, uh, you know, in the dash. Got the wiper where it was on the movie car. Stuff like that. Um, so I guess that's about it, guys. Um, I'm real happy with it. Like I said, it's a couple of different kits. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, if I wouldn't have had trouble with the uh, grill, I would have only been down to just two kits. You know, I originally was going to use the 289 engine out of the of the 66 Mustang, but this engine was close enough, especially with the intake on the top, you can't really tell. And then I had to add the distributor and all that, but uh, that's pretty much it. So that's going to be a wrap for this one, guys. I really enjoyed it. Um, I actually have gone and bought a 58 Plymouth uh, Christine model kit because I think later on I'm going to try to modify that and actually do the sheriff's car. That's actually a 57 Plymouth Fury that they used. Um, uh, it's kind of cool because uh, the uh, you know that car was really underrated back in the day, and, and uh, in the in the movie they never show show you what's under the hood of the sheriff's car. But there's a scene where uh, the mechanic is talking to him, and he's, he's t talks about it having dual carburetors, which you know. And when you see the interior of the car in the movie, you can tell it's a Fury. It's got all the gold trim and everything. They just painted it a basic blue and white on the outside and took away a lot of the fancy trim that was on the car. But uh, So it was a pretty pretty stout hot rod in it on its own and a good matchup against this car. So they, they, the, the director of this film, he was inter an interesting guy. Uh, the more I read about this, uh, he, you know, he, he made sure that uh, he wanted the, the three, do three deuce set up underneath of the hood of this one. He wanted it to have a quick change rear end, and he picked the uh, sheriff's car too, you know, for what it was. So he must have been a gearhead of some sorts. So he picked out some really cool, uh, classic, you know, muscle cars and stuff. He was he definitely a car guy, so that's what makes the film really good. You know, it's kind of a cheesy movie overall, but uh, the uh, cars in the film are just, you know, the stars of the movie. So I'm really glad I was able to get a chance to build this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, if you're going to try to take one of these on yourself, just drop a comment down there in the uh, comment section, and I'll try and answer it as best as I can. Uh, I would say the hardest part to find is going to be these uh, the decal set. That's by Fred Cady. Uh, they do pop up every once in a while. Beware of substitutes. There are there are sets out there where you get just the basic flames and nothing else. Um, you might have to settle for that, but uh, every once in a while, like I said, they'll pop up. And then again, try to check and see what scale those decals are for because as I mentioned in part one of this uh, these were marked 125th scale which is why I originally bought the uh, Ravel 34 Ford um, and found out right away after I started you know I worked on that entire body got it ready to go found out they were the wrong decals <laughs> so um, they were for the 124th and so they were way too big so I had to you know change plans and get this kit instead that all in all it all worked out great in the end it's all about having fun and modeling and you know I like doing models because sometimes they're challenging and that's what's uh, part of uh, doing you know building so hope you guys enjoyed it I'll finish this up at the end here with a a quick view I'll put it on the old super spin 760 here you gotta kinda live with her a little bit she's getting a little bit of a hitch in her giddy up as she's getting old she kinda stutters a little bit as she spins around but hope you guys will get the point I'll wrap it up with that so I'll see you guys next time uh, we're going to be coming back with something brand new, a surprise off the bench. I'll pick something off the shelf and start building on it. We'll have updates here and also on the live uh, show that we're doing on Saturday. So enjoy the uh, turntable scene. We'll see you next time, everybody. Take care and happy modeling.